Hello, thank you for being in a new video. This time I have for you my top 5 of the best mid-range devices. Let's start. Yeah, to select them, we had a range from 4,000 pesos to 6,999 Mexican pesos. As you know, there can be many ways to categorize different devices, especially in a market that is so saturated with many options. That's why I also gave myself the task of choosing the ones that gave me the best experience when testing them. To recommend them to you now that a good shopping season is coming, so let's go with the first one. Nubia Neo 2. This device is very focused on gamers because it integrates touch triggers. It is from the same red magic family but it came out under the Nubia brand. However, it integrates the full suite of options seen in past generations of red magic with many software tools to enhance your gaming experience. So if you combine touch triggers with good gaming software, you would have a good experience. The Unisoc T8020 processor may not sound that powerful to you, but in its price range, I think it competes positively. It's not the most powerful thing you're going to find in the range, that's for sure. But as I said, the fact of having touch triggers can be very attractive for those who like to play games from the cell phone. In addition, the design is also very attractive for gamers and it also has a charge separation function that allows you to plug the charger to the current and all the energy is transferred to the processor without going through the battery to avoid overheating. So with this device you could play games while it is plugged in without fear of damaging the battery. The screen has 120 Hz which also complements the gaming experience well. Although it is not a spectacular screen, but I think for gaming it is fine. It also has stereo sound which again complements the gaming experience well and also takes good portrait pictures. Consider also that it comes with support for 5G networks. It also has FM radio without the need to have headphones plugged in. That is a very unusual element that is present in this device. And finally, it has 8GB of RAM with 256GB of storage. So it's definitely a good choice. The next one is the Poco x Pro 5G. This has a launch price in Mexico of 5,999 pesos. Remember that we take as a reference the launch prices, but this price may have varied and may even be cheaper or sometimes slightly higher. But anyway, let me continue. Its processor is the MediaTek Dimensity 8300 Ultra. This processor is meant for much, 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 much more costly devices. So believe me, the expertise is going to be extremely powerful. Again, it can be an attractive alternative for gamers because the processor really has a lot of power, although it doesn't have the benefits of triggers and as many software options as we saw in the Nubia model. Its base version is 8 gigabytes of RAM with 256 storage, but there is also an addition with 512 gigabytes of storage, although it is a bit more expensive and falls out of this range, but it is still attractive. The screen is AMOLED with 120 Hz, even supporting HDR content. It's a screen that does stand head and shoulders above all its rivals, as does the processor. It also has stereo sound and is capable of recording video in 4K, which in this price range is not yet commonplace. Its camera will also have a sufficiently good zoom, usually little did not stand out in camera but has been improving, so in this sense we will offer a good quality. It also has a good night mode, although you do need to use it to take good night photos unlike other devices that from the automatic mode come out well, but at this price I think it takes good pictures. It has a promise of 3 years of software updates. That's unusual and it already has HyperOS and is obviously going to get the next update. It also has infrared to work as a universal remote control, something that likewise is not so usual in the vast majority of smartphones, let's not even say at this price, but in general in the entire catalog of smartphones there are not so many that have this feature. Its vibration motor is on the X axis. This means that the vibration is going to feel a little bit more intense and more defined, like a kind of a little bump instead of a simple vibration. So when you press a button, when you do some other actions or when you're playing games, this feedback on the hand is very premium. A 67 watt charger included in the box. I'm not sure you're going to find a device that charges faster in this price range or if you do maybe it has a smaller battery. And finally it also has NFC, meaning you could set up your cards in Google Pay and make payments simply by bringing your cell phone close to the bank terminals. Although in Mexico it is not something so common but maybe in other countries it could be something also attractive. Let's go with the next one. 
Nothing Phone 2A. This has a launch price in Mexico of 6699 Its main feature will be the Glyph interface that has lights on the back, which can be synchronized with the sound to create very attractive effects when they are calling you, or you could even use it to see the volume and some other details, but definitely its design is highly original. Also on the front we will find a design with symmetrical bezels, a very clean design. This brand is usually characterized by having very special designs. Its screen is also AMOLED with one of the demanding audio, supports LDAC, LHDC and APTX codecs for you to use high resolution wireless headphones. Interestingly, it integrates a 50 megapixel ultra wide camera. This is unusual in this price range. In fact, some manufacturers don't even put an ultra wide camera. But in this case, in addition to the fact that it does incorporate this second camera which could be useful for many people, it is also a high resolution camera, so it has good capabilities. With this you can record in both with the ultra wide camera as well as the main camera. So if you want to record multiple videos I think it could also turn out to be a very interesting alternative not only in design but also in this sense of content creation. In fact I like that it has very good stabilization even when you're recording in 4K. Other devices don't let you record in 4K, and if they do let you record in 4K, suddenly the stabilization can become a little bit simple or bad. But in this case, I liked it quite a bit for this specific section. It has three years of software updates. In this price range, it is also something unusual. Most manufacturers or in other models, you're not going to find any clear update policy or it's going to be more reduced. So it will have a good lifetime. The battery also performed above average in my tests, although the battery is something that can vary a lot, but based only on the tests that I do to all smartphones, I can tell you that in my case it performed beyond what the average performs. Finally, its processor is the MediaTek Dimensity Pro, a processor that does really well in games. So, it's a very balanced device and a good choice in this price range. Let's go with the next one. Galaxy A35 5G, which has a launch price in Mexico of 6,999 pesos. Among its strengths, we must highlight the distribution because other models that I mentioned previously may have very selected distributors or only online. But you can find this device in many places and this also means that with some stores you can find more discount than others. So, you have more search range also to choose where it is cheaper. This generation now integrates a glass cover, so it gives a little bit more of a premium feel. Also, we're going to find Gorilla Glass Victus protection for the screen, which is very rare at this price point, and it also has the IP level of resistance against water and dust. Again, that's a bit of a rarity at this price point, so if you were to drop it in the water, it has a good chance of surviving. If you drop it too, it might have a little more resistance than its rivals so that the screen doesn't crack as easily. That's not to say it's an all-rounder, so please don't go giving it rough treatment, but it seems that in terms of durability, we might find something positive in this device. Related to that, it has four years of software updates, so it's going to be getting a lot of new versions, it's probably going to be getting new features and new aesthetics. So, it's going to be very good in the long run. Its screen is AMOLED with 120Hz, so it also has good quality, although it's not the best screen in the segment. The camera is another positive aspect compared to most of its competitors. Samsung usually has a good treatment in this price range as well. Moreover, it records in 4K with both the rear camera and the front camera, so for content creators it may also appeal. If you want to record a blog or something similar, you can have the same quality on this side as if you record a scene to the other side. In fact, it's also one of the best devices for shooting video at this price point because of the adjustment it has for backlighting. It performs very well in that scenario and can record 480 frames per second slow motion, which is unusual for having more creative scenes. But if there's one thing that all galaxies excel at, it's their ecosystem. Samsung has a very good ecosystem at the moment with its watch, its headphones, its tablet, so everything interacts very well with each other, it has good technologies, connectivity is going to be easy and it definitely gets attention, plus you're going to find a good battery life that can also exceed the average in this price range. And its processor is the Exynos 1380, which may maybe scare you a little bit, but it's a processor that for the price range performs well. I'm not saying it's the best processor in the range, or that it's ultra recommended for gamers, but it doesn't disappoint. Finally, we have the Motorola Edge 50 Fusion. It is priced at 6,999 pesos. This device is also one of my favorites.
Like Samsung, it has a very good distribution, so you can find it in many stores, both physical and online, and so you can also try to find the best place that will give you the best discount. This one has the IP68 level of resistance against water and dust, so you can submerge it even deeper. It's worth clarifying that this level of resistance is more for accidental drops than recreational underwater use. Although you could submerge it to take a quick photo, but always remember that in all devices, if you get to do this action in salt water or in the pool, it is advisable to do it for a short time, at a shallow depth, and then rinse it with clean water. But there is something in which Motorola stands out a lot lately and it is in its designs. We are going to find a very stylized design. In this case, the back cover is made of chamois for this edition. It is very slim. In addition, it has OLED curved screen with 120Hz. And if you are of the demanding in audio, it also brings support for high-resolution codices such as LHDC, LDSC and APTX. It integrates an ultra-wide camera with autofocus. As I was telling you a moment ago, other devices do not even give you ultra-wide camera in this price range, but in this case, it goes further because this ultra-wide camera having autofocus also works for high-quality macro photography, not like the macro cameras that have other devices that have very low resolution. In this case, it would give you very good quality pictures even of tiny objects. It also has Adobe Scan integrated in its camera. So, you don't need to buy any other application or pay any subscription to have a good quality scanner. Here you can scan your documents, then export them to PDF, apply filters and more. And it's definitely something I liked a lot. And pay attention to this, it also records in 4K, both with the main camera as well as with the ultra-wide camera and with the front camera. So, for content creators, it can also be an attractive tool in this price range for its good video recording capabilities. In fact, the dual recording that can show you both the rear camera and the front camera could be useful for that as well. And if you travel a lot, this is the only device in the category with eSIM support. If you don't know what this technology is, you should know about it because usually when you go on a trip, you're sure to buy a SIM card so you can have a data plan and use your cell phone and your social networks. But in this case, having eSIM, it is much easier to simply acquire a QR code through a platform that sells electronic SIM cards. Then you can add mobile data plans without the need to buy a physical SIM card. This is not only useful when traveling, you could also use it in your own country with a provider, but it is especially useful when traveling. It also integrates a 68 watt charger in the box, so it can charge in 48 minutes from 0 to 100. And it even integrates advanced technologies like a very good screen projection in desktop mode so you can view applications in Windows. If you connect a wireless keyboard and mouse to it, you could use it as a computer-like experience. And it has Smart Connect with a very good ecosystem in conjunction with a Windows laptop of any brand. By the way, I take this space to clarify that in the review I had said that this device projects its screen by cable, but it doesn't, it can't project that way, but it can do it wirelessly. And finally, it has 256 gigabytes of storage. So it's a very well-balanced device and highly recommended. Now let me know which of these models you consider to be a better option for you, or if there are any other options in this same price range that I forgot, put that in the comments as well. For now, we've reached the end of this video. If you liked it, you know you can let me know. And see you next time.